Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with 2018-19 Panini Prism Basketball. It's a 20-box blaster box random team break. Random team number six from jazbeescasebreaks.com. And a big thank you to all of these folks for getting into it. One spot gets you two teams in this full case break. So let's double you up, and all 30 teams, of course, are in. And let's randomize each list. Snake Eyes, two times. One and a two. One, two. Easy. Josh Pruce down to Stephen K. Snake Eyes, one and two. Bulls down to Warriors. All right, Josh, you have the Bulls. David Bruins with the Timberwolves. Jeremy with the Nets and Pistons. Anthony with the Pelicans. Brian with the Rockets and Wizards. Thomas with the Spurs. Martin with the Thunder. Jeremy, you got the Jazz and the Lakers. You got my Lakers. Thomas with the Nuggets. Mark with the Raptors. Anthony Parkinson, you got the Magic. Stephen K with the Hornets. Martin with the Mavs. Brian with the Hawks. Mark with the Celtics. Jeremy with the Pacers. Jay, you got the Bucks and the Knicks. David Bruins with the Sixers, Jeremy with the Blazers, Josh with the Cavs, Mark with the Heat, Brian Croft with the Grizz, uh, Anthony with the, Cli uh, the Clippers, Mark with the Suns, Anthony with the Kings, and the Warriors for Stephen K. Hey, and feel free to trade if you'd like. Give it a few moments. No, no trades. Here's our twenty box break right here. Four cars for pack, six packs for box. Blah 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 blah. What's a special in here? Um, the green pul the green pulsar prisms number twenty five and the purple waves are exclu exclusive to these blaster boxes. Vet base doesn't ship. Veteran commons won't ship as usual. Oh, well, let's close it up and let's go. TWC trade window closed. Let's print and let's rip. Mothra was hoping that his Sixers. Will do well in the playoffs. How far do you think they can go, Mothro? There's the official printout. Sorry, Jeremy. Trade window is already closed. All right, let's see what we got in here. This break should should take about, I looked up the previous breaks I did, I think about half an hour or so, 35, 40 minutes. So it should be relatively quick. And then we'll be ready for our next break right after this one, maybe around the 45 minute mark. So as you can see with this helicopter shot, we got four rows of five right here to make the 20. Gilo saying, why not break a case of status 19 blasters? That's a Nick Jaspi question. You can talk to him on Monday about his buying choices. All right, here we go. Well, NBA playoffs are going to start on – playoffs are going to start on Saturday, boys and girls. That is exciting. 
I will I will try to make some uh, I'll try to do some little bit of research and do my uh, my series picks. I don't think I'm gonna bet individual games this year. Last year I got crushed <laughs> betting individual games. Maybe I'll have some player props of you know have some fun with that, but otherwise just keep things interesting. That'll be exciting. I get to watch the uh, I get to watch the uh, playoffs stress free. Once again my Lakers not in the playoffs. Lakers organization seems to be melting down in front of my very eyes. Magic Johnson resigning kind of out of the blue. The night everybody told me, I was like, oh, okay, you know, like it was a big, it was a whole decision by the organization and blah, blah, blah. No, it turns out that, that Magic Johnson just kind of threw everybody under the bus and was like, eh, being president of basketball operations stopped becoming fun, so I'm done. He just called a press conference, impromptu press conference, and just babbled on for 45 minutes, and then it was finished. What's up with that? I think it's a good thing, though. There's Hamadou Diallo. Green. Those are not numbered, but of course they will ship. And there's Jalen Brunson. Sensational swatches relic. So... I don't know. I don't know what's happening with my Lakers. Not that any, not that anyone feels bad for the for the Lakers. <laughs> but it is a crazy story out here in LA cuz there it was just kind of kind of out of the blue, but I don't know. Magic Johnson is kind of a I don't think he's cut out for that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? I don't think he's uh, I don't think he's cut out for that kind of job. He's a good ambassador of to the game. He's he makes some good broad. He's a big picture guy. He makes good broad business decisions. You know, has done well with various franchises that he's been part of. You know, he's good at doing that. He's good at being a humanitarian and a philanthropist. All that sort of stuff. He's raise money for all sorts of causes. He's good at that sort of stuff. But you have him do the nitty-gritty grind of, hey, you want to be president of basketball operations? You want to scout college games? You want to, you know, follow the rules on tampering? You want to go to random G League games in the middle of your week and do that sort of stuff? Recruit guys, go to the office and, and grind? Maybe, maybe that's not for him. I was kind of hoping that, kind of hoping that, you know, they'd move uh, Rob Polinka too. But it looks like Rob Polinka is uh, looks like Rob Polinka has has won that sort of Game of Thronesish kind of battle there. There's Andrew Wiggins. Marvin Bagley will go to the Kings. Anthony and Andrew Wiggins will go to the T Wolves. David Bruins. So I don't know what happens. We'll see what happens. Big Boys 007. What's going on? How are you? Go Warriors, Dave says. Brian O says you heard a rumor that he was leaving uh, the Dodgers too. I think his ownership in the Dodgers is very small, so I don't think that's going to be a big deal. That's Luka Doncic. That'll go to Martin. That might that might cover the spot. I guess if it was a if it was a silver, he may cover the spot. So I don't know. We'll we'll see what we'll see what happens with with the Lakers. It's the it's just a big big daily soap opera now. Are they gonna get rid of Luke? You know what's gonna Luke Walton? Are they gonna what are they gonna do with Rob Polinka? Is he gonna stay? No one in the league seems to like Rob Polinka. They don't want to do work with do business with him. So how is that gonna affect the off season? Lakers need some free agents, but KD's not gonna come here. Clay's not gonna come here. Kawhi's probably not going to come here. Kyrie, maybe, but that's no guarantee. So who does that leave the Lakers with? Maxing out Tobias Harris? Maxing out Jimmy Butler? Fine players, but do you want to, I mean, do the Lakers want to be the team that maxes those guys? Especially when they could use, that, use a lot of that money elsewhere? So a lot of question marks up in the air. So we'll see what happens. I guess the good news is they're bad enough to maybe get a decent, like a top 10 pick or something like that. 
Good news is that young core is still around. I don't think that Anthony Davis trade is going to happen, so I think I think they'll have that young core. Mothro is a Sixers guy. You don't you don't want Tobias Harris to go anywhere? There's Kyrie Thomas. For the Pistons. Well, I mean, you guys, it's going to either be Tobias Harris or Jimmy Butler for the uh, for the Sixers. It's going to be one or the other. I, I don't think you guys can keep both, though, financially. Unless you want to go over the cap and eat money and all that sort of stuff for those two guys. It may not be worth it for those two guys. Well, speaking of the Sixers, that's a good segue to the first playoff game of this year, ladies and gentlemen. First NBA playoff game of the year on Saturday morning, 11.30 my time, at 11.30 a.m. my time. Brooklyn at Philadelphia on ESPN. Anyone have any thoughts on that game? Or, or on that series, let's say. It might be easier to talk about the series itself. I think the Brook I think Brooklyn can can give can give uh, Philadelphia a bit of a scare. I think they'll win a game or two. Okay. There are multiples on the table. One is cash. There's Amari Stoudemire, sensational swatches. Brian, oh, you think you think the Sixers will keep Jimmy Butler? Do they want to keep Jimmy Butler? Are they gonna max are they gonna give max money to Jimmy Butler? That's, that's a big question, right? I don't think... Maybe they will. I don't know. I don't think they want to give max money to either of those guys, but they would like those guys to stay. All right. Amari Stoudemire for the Knicks. Relic going to Jay and the Knicks. Mothros says Sixers and five. I like that young team, though. they got an exciting team. they got... They got D'Angelo Russell, who plays pretty well. I like Jared Allen. You know, he can be a foil for, uh, for Joel Embiid. Yeah, see, Chris Lombardo's on my page right here. He's expecting Sixers to win, but Brooklyn will at least make it a six or seven game series. D'Lo will go off, help them win at least two games. I, th I think so. I think uh, the Nets, the Nets can run. The Nets can run with the Sixers. You know, so I, th I think they can, I think they can scare the uh, Sixers a little bit. I mean, there's an outside chance uh, of an upset. If I got to pick an upset, I would. I think the Knicks would be a great like kind of, if you're going like sleeper underdog, right, to win the first round. Why not the Nets? If the Sixers struggle on the road as they have last, as they did last year, right for whatever reason, you know, if Joel Embiid's kind of a maybe a wonky knee from Joel Embiid, who knows what happens there? And if the Nets for some reason just play out of their out of their minds and get get lucky, that could be interesting. Right, yeah, Chris Lombardo's like, they got, yeah, the Nets have a lot of good shooters. If they shoot the ball well, play a little defense, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, you know, who knows. Josh Pruce saying, hey, it's the playoffs, man. Come on, don't overthink it. Net, Nets will win one, but let's not overthink it. All right, what about the next series? The second game of Saturday, and I'll be here all Saturday breaking with you guys, so I'll see you for the end of this game. Or the game, the Brooklyn Sixers game will be over by the time I get to the shop on Saturday. But we should be at the tail end of the Orlando at Toronto game right there. What, what does everyone think about that series? The Orlando Magic starting in Toronto. Orlando Magic also an interesting team. They're one of the hottest teams coming down the stretch. They have been giant killers. They have they have beat some pretty big teams. So I don't think there's like a fear factor there. You know, there's no intimidation factor, I think. But it's got to be Toronto, right? 
is Carl Anthony Towns, Timberwolves, Sensational Swatches. Josh Bruce says, well, if Orlando shoots well and plays Divas, they win. It was, we'll see. For Orlando, to me, it sounds nuts. The, for, with, the, with the Nets, though, it doesn't sound as crazy. If I had, like, a, if there was, like, Joe, pick one underdog to win a series, I would pick the Nets. I, would, I don't know. I like Orlando, but I don't, I don't think, I think there's just so much just solid play from, from, from Toronto. I, don't know, I just like the Nets better. I, I think I think they sound more realistic as a possible upset, as opposed to Orlando versus Toronto. I also I also think Toronto is a better team than the Sixers. Yeah, well, most like yeah, I think most likely all four of the favorites are going to win, right? There's there's no real dangers of any upsets really in, in a lot of these matches. Clippers at Golden State. Clippers aren't going to beat the Warriors. Warriors are going to, Warriors are going to cruise. You know. San was San Antonio at Denver? No, Denver's got to cruise against San Antonio, right? Deshaun Marion, sensational swatches for the Mavs. It's for Martin. There's Rudy Gobert for the Jazz. Those are not numbered, but I think these are exclusive to this edition, this Blaster edition. All right, next one. I don't think Indiana's at Boston without Oladipo. I don't think I don't think Indiana's going to go very far in the playoffs. Or I don't think they're going to beat Boston in a seven-game series. Detroit. I mean, Detroit has some good coaching, right? The old Raptors coach, but I don't think they're going to they're going to make any noise against the against the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't think the Jazz. Jazz could put up a fight, but I think Houston's been playing some great basketball down the stretch too. They've actually been playing some defense. That was their biggest issue during the regular season, but that's starting to shore up. And that makes them an incredibly dangerous team. I think those are all your first round matchups, right? Yeah, so that leaves Oklahoma City at Portland. Um, Oklahoma City at Portland. I I think you're right, Brian. Oh, that might be the most realistic chance for an upset. Speaking of the Trailblazers, this is Clyde the Glide Drexler. That goes to Jeremy and the Trailblazers. I think the Trailblazers maybe without without Nurkic. That that's kind of a big issue. And I feel like I feel like you always think I don't know maybe or maybe this is the year. <laughs> Everyone thinks, man, Trailblazers kind of have a good team. They got some big names on that team. There's Terry Rozier. But they never seem to get it done in the playoffs. All right. You're getting there, folks. Then we have like 15 boxes to go. We're getting there. But I'm glad that the playoffs are starting. The last, especially with how bad my Lakers have been, the last two, I've just been like, come on, playoffs. We've got... I had the playoff start. So, like in the last two weeks of the seat of the regular season, is always a drag.
There's Svi Mahaliuk. And there is Darius Miles. Autograph for the Clippers. Anthony Parkinson. Clippers, I have to admit, have played some really good basketball. After all those trades, especially with Tobias Harris gone, they're like, that, that's it, right? They're sunk. But no. Doc, Doc Rivers is refocused. There's Aaron Gordon for the Magic. Is refocused and ready to... And, and has just done incredibly well this season. He's ready to go. I don't know how far they're going to go in the playoffs, but I think they could, they, could, they could probably win a game against Golden State, right? What's up, Rex? Rex says, did I ever tell you how I went to Project Revolution in 2004 and saw Lincoln Park Corn and Lincoln Park Corn and Snoop were headlining? Interesting. Oh, Brian O went too. Maybe you guys were hanging out together and you guys didn't even know it. I saw I saw Snoop Dogg, and uh, there's Rondé Hollis Jefferson for the Nets. I saw Snoop and uh, Dre at Coachella a few years, four or five years back. Another Luca. We'll save one of those. Not a silver, but even those base cards still carry some value. David Robinson, the Admiral. Sensational swatches for the Spurs. Thomas Bow with the Spurs. Brian O's Limp Biscuit was probably there too. I think Corn it would be the only band that I would be interested in there. And Snoop, obviously, but. All right. Next box. George Carlin, 06. That's pretty cool, Rex. He's going through his old ticket stubs. Corn is playing at a casino in Tinley Park in August. Brian O saying corn, blackjack, some booze. What could go wrong? Nothing. That sounds like a good time. Virginia basketball. 
Elia Kobu, Sensational Swatches Relic. That'll go to the Suns. That's going to go to Mark Glassman, Boombox, with the Suns. There's Yao Ming. All right. We are almost there, folks. Two, four, six, and eight boxes to go. Two, four, six, and eight are almost there. You saw Bill Cosby the same here, not bragging now about that one. I mean, I don't know. That, that brings us to the interesting philosophical argument of, of can you separate the art from the artist? Or is the art and the artist one and the same? And we've got Shaquille O'Neal. Sensational swatches. Nice. Orlando Magic Edition. Big Aristotle. Big Diesel. Shaq Daddy. Officer Shaq. The General. That goes to Anthony P. and the Orlando Magic. DJ Diesel says Kyle Kramer. What's up, Kyle? When he was in Phoenix, the big cactus. <laughs> you can't log into your account, Ryan L. Did you forget your password? Click the forget password button. And then you can create a new password if you've forgotten that. Otherwise... I don't know what else to do. <laughs> um, Jay, now you're just showing off. Jay Tinney's just showing off. David Bowie live at the Tower in Philly, circa 1974. Bossman might have been at that show. I think he was living in, in Philadelphia in the 70s. He's seen some guys at the Tower. All right, it could be a sign though. Right, Kyle, you're right. Kent Reed, Sensational Swatches, Brooklyn Nets, Jeremy S. <laughs> you don't get loud at all, Ryan. You're actually one of the quieter people in the chat. Why would we we why we wouldn't boot you because you were getting loud? Why would we stop people from spending money? Right, remember we are a for profit business. We let Rex spend money here all the time. That's right, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Joe P. I don't know if Joe P's in there. Sometimes he's listening. Yeah, we can handle Joe P. We can handle anybody, Ryan. Only reason why we would ban anybody from buying is if if they try to if they try to game the if they try to game the coupon code system, that's an instant ban. And uh, I don't know, if you if you call us an a hole and say we're we're bad people and and trash us and the webs I mean stuff like that will get you banned. Otherwise
That uh, sensational swatch Landry Shamit is still Sixers edition. That'll be for David Bruins. There's Josh Richardson. <laughs> EA has certainly tried. Yeah, we haven't gotten rid of him yet. Jay Tinney also saw Bobby Orr play in the Stanley Cup. Man, I've seen a lot of great events. Rex's favorite concert, X-Fest 2000, where I saw STP and Green Day. Oh, that's actually a pretty good show. And Papa Roach, give or take, but that's good. Is the, is the tower still around? Josh, you saw Radiohead there? What era Radiohead? I saw In Rainbow's Radiohead at the Santa Barbara Bowl. Which was pretty fantastic. It's good times. Yeah, um, the boss man every once in a while regales us with a uh, regales us with a story of one of the crazy shows that that he's seen at the tower. There's Jermaine O'Neal, Miami Heat, 2006. What record was that in 2006 or circa 2006? I don't remember. Uh, I feel like they don't, they don't, they don't have, they don't play fake plastic trees as much on their, on their sets. Videotape, I think they do. I feel like that's like a that has been like an intro. That has been like an intro song before they go out on stage. I feel like EA they, they, high and dry. They don't they don't play. It's rare that they play stuff off of the Benz record for some reason. It looks cold in Chicago, you guys. there. Harrison Barnes, Sensational Swatches, Dallas Mavericks edition for Martin. There's Vucevic. Dylan Brooks for the Grizz. Uh, just a couple, Kyle. Nothing, uh, nothing OMG, but there are two or three in here. Should be a couple more, right? Per, per 20 box blaster case? I forget how many there are per... Yeah, just two, right, Steven? All right. Three little boxes to go. Good luck, everybody. I see about seven orders coming in. So we'll, we'll go look through those and see what's going on and see what we want to get into after this. Derek Rose, Sensational Swatch Relic. 
think the Timberwolves had have had like three or four relics, right? So there you go, David Bruins with that. Grayson Allen. Someone someone said the other night that Grayson Allen dropped forty points in a one of like the last regular season games. Not heard of dirty heads from Huntington Beach, EA. What kind of what kind of music do they play? Brian O saying if you can make one festival a year, recommend Summerfest here in MKE. Oh, Milwaukee. Eleven days? That's just too much. Eleven days, fifteen stages, right on the lake. I'll have to check it out. I don't know. We get spoiled out here in Southern California, Brian. Because we've got Coachella two hours away. Alright. Which is this weekend. I haven't been in a couple years or so. Because um, we have Coachella. And then we have... Uh, and then we have like other random festivals. We have like mini Coachella festivals at FYF here in LA and all that sort of stuff. So, so yeah. And then nowadays there's so many GD festivals that it seems like the band list often, often looks, to be, looks to be pretty similar. There's a lot of crossover these days. Kyle saying Frontier Days in Cheyenne usually has usually country they got post Malone. I'm trying to get the kids to go. Jay, I remember records. Guess what? They're making a comeback. I think they're outselling CDs nowadays. Yeah, I agree with you, Boombox. Like, after three days of, of hard partying at Coachella, I'm wrecked. I, I can't imagine doing uh, doing 11, 11 days. So do I have to find lodging for 11 days? That sounds like an expensive... I guess if it's only 20 bucks, but... Michael Bridges, Relic. Grayson Allen, Purple. Yeah, records are making a huge comeback, or have been has been making a comeback for like the last 10 years. A lot of hipster kids buying records and, and collecting them nowadays. So there's been a recent boom in that. CDs are dead though. Those are dead. Nene, is your autograph for the Rockets. That gets, that's going to go to Houston. Brian Croft, last spot mojo. Nice. And there you go, folks. That's our last. Uh, and there's Ricky Rubio for the Jazz. So that Grayson Allen and the Ricky Rubio going to Jeremy S. with the Jazzy Jazz. We haven't seen this guy's autograph. Charles Barkley. And there's Kyle Korver at the end. There you have it, boys and girls. That was a 20 box. It was a blaster box. 20 box break. Random team number six from jazbeescasebreaks.com of 1819 Prism at Basketball. Thanks for breaking with us. Thanks for watching with us. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.